Hello folks, in this uh, video segment, I'm going to show you how to use the concept of inertial relief in order to solve a static problem, uh, which is actually a rotating disk, and I'll be doing it in the 3D Experience Release 2023X. Now, a year ago, I did the same problem, except that I did not use inertial relief, and I uh, took a sector of the disk uh, using symmetry, and uh, use break elements instead and i will make a reference to that uh, in the next slide uh, however i want to point out that the purpose of these uh, these uh, uh, basic elementary videos is to uh, uh, facilitate the, the job of people who want to use 3d experiences fea solver which is which is really the abacus program so uh, uh, just to let you know, inertial relief is uh, used in situations where there are uh, essentially no uh, uh, restraints available. For example, if you take if you take a, 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 a block, uh, a piece of steel that is uh, applied on it, a force, and this force obviously, if there is nothing else to counterbalance that, this force will make the the block to accelerate and once it accelerates, then it's going to essentially get compressed, and there will be some force, uh, of some stresses developed in it. However, if you want to solve that problem as a static problem, there is no uh, restraint. Basically, you apply the force, and now what? Okay. Uh, now, uh, there are other examples, such as a rocket, which is essentially that same block, except that the shape of it is different. Or case they take the case of a full disk that's rotating at a constant speed, Essentially, there is no uh, there is no uh, restraint in it, uh, and we still should be able to solve the problem. And that's where inertial relief comes into the picture, uh, which I will show in this video. Uh, by the way, uh, after I finish this thing, I will repeat this uh, this video, except that I take a sector, uh, just like I did it previously when I used, I used solid elements or break elements. In this video, and the one that's going to follow up, I'll be using shell element, and uh, hopefully that's going to be uh, beneficial to you. Now, the inertial relief uh, has to be is one, is one of the uh, the loads in the uh, 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 essentially the uh, structural scenario uh, scenario workbench. And if you look at it, there's different options that you've got. Uh, you've got you can use uh, inertial relief is right here. And by the way, we're going to be using centrifugal force uh, to specify the speed of the constant speed of rotation of that uh, of that disk. Now, uh, uh, the problem that we're going to be doing is essentially here. The dimensions are given, and uh, this is the link. This is the link to my uh, to my video in uh, in my channel, which actually I solved the same problem except that I took a I don't know 30 degree sector perhaps and uh, and they use break elements. Uh, the difference is that when you take a sector, then obviously there are symmetry planes that you can use and that prevents the rigid body motion. But when you think about applying a you know some kind of a moment here or a torque which make this thing turn at a constant speed. Obviously, there are no restraints, even though it's a, it's a static problem, essentially. The solutions are given here. These are from, from a basic uh, strength of a, a material book or stress analysis book. The, there are analytical formulas uh, for uh, this particular problem. And uh, I have used uh, default properties of steel and uh, uh, the, or the the RPM of the, the, the disk is around 8,000, 8, 9,000 RPM, which is 1,000 radians per second. Now, uh, the, uh, and, and this, is the, this is actually the dis displacement, the radial displacement, because as, as, as this thing turns, this thing expands, and obviously the points move uh, away from the center of rotation, and this is how uh, displacements look like. And here I've also shown you the uh, the maximum. Uh, this is the uh, you know, the maximum stresses, the maximum uh, uh, well, the, the extreme stresses appear uh, at the center. Uh, for example, you can see here that the uh, uh, the this, the stress, the radial stress, 
radial stress at the center is non-zero, but as you go further up towards the edge, of course, it drops to zero, and the hoop stress always exists. Okay, so uh, so we're going to be comparing our results with these. Now, I also have prepared some slides here from different sources. I believe this is the uh, theoretical uh, documentation for uh, the 3D Experiences online documentation. And if you're interested, you can read these things. And here's another one from a different source, uh, which is up there. Uh, again, it talks about inertia. If you don't really find these things in fundamental, you know, basic books, basically, uh, but you do see it in more advanced uh, uh, finite element textbooks uh, or, or literature. But anyway, yeah, if, if you have some time, you want to read this, it's right there. You can pause it and read it. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, go back to our geometry right there. So uh, there is, uh, uh, because I'm going to be using shell element, I need a surface. And if I need a surface, I'm going to do it in generative shape, shape design, which is uh, this uh, uh, particular uh, uh, workbench in uh, the the CATIO program uh, but all it's all integrated within the 3d experience right there okay so I'm already there you know that uh, I'm going to on this plane I'm going to sketch a circle of radius 300 inches uh, no 300 millimeters sorry so there we are let's dimension this thing a diameter is 600. Uh, radius is uh, 300, right? Uh, this is uh, uh, 600, it should be 600. Okay, let's uh, fit it. There. Now, uh, pretty much it. Uh, exit. And we're going to create a surface here on the surface tab right there. Uh, we're going to fill this, so right right there you can see that this is a fill so we select that and we'll say okay uh, the surface is created now for a reason that may not be obvious to you right now I'm going to create a coordinate system and the reason I create a coordinate system is that later on when I want to say that this disk is spinning at some speed I need to specify what is the axis of rotation and since I don't have any any other geometry here the easiest way to do it is to go and create a an axis system here and use its uh, z axis as the uh, orientation that you want for angular velocity. Uh, that is done in wireframe. Here is the coordinate system right here, axis system, and immediately it creates create a coordinate system and places at the global origin, which is fine. That's all we need is this line basically. Good. Uh, let's apply material to this thing. So uh, let's go ahead here and uh, go to two. Create a material. Uh, and let me call it uh, today's uh, February 24. 24 rotating disk. Okay. And, uh, uh, yep. Now that's going to be created in my library here, right there, right click, apply, and I'm going to close that, and I'm going to apply it to this part. Of course, I haven't put any numbers in there, I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so structural. Uh, density is 7850. 7850, which is typical of steel kilogram per meter cube. And then we're going to go to Abacus uh, Multiphysic, Mechanical, Elasticity, Elastic, and this is 200, and 200 gigapascal. Automatically it turns it into uh, Newton per meter squared because that's what my unit is 0 0.29, I believe, the Poisson ratio. Say okay now remember for inertial release you have to specify the the density although it's a static you're going to solve it as a static problem you still have to uh, specify the density of the material that's uh, pretty much it so now we're going to go to uh, uh, structural model creation 
uh, we're going to use the standard uh, uh, finite elements model and say nothing uh, all the default are okay here say okay good uh, now we're going to uh, mesh this thing let me mesh this with a nice uh, four-sided quad elements so that is going to be the surface I'm going to mesh it with uh, yeah sure 10 millimeter let's look at it yep that's good I mean this is an overkill for this problem but anyway I'll just leave it the way it is uh, maybe maybe I make it how about making it 20 instead this is too yeah that that's more civilized okay now uh we have to specify the uh, uh, 2d properties which is right here which essentially is se shell section i refer to a 2d property because that here used to call it and 16 millimeter is the thickness of this uh, shell let me see for a second yeah 16 millimeter right there okay uh, that's pretty much it. So uh, from here, we're going to go to uh, structural scenario creation. We're going to create, use the finite element model that we just created right there. It's a structure, obviously. Okay, good. Now, uh, for the procedure we're going to use a static problem static step and because i want to show you how the process works i'm not going to do oh, it's a non-linear problem it's a linear static problem linear elastic problem so we just i, I go to the advanced and uncheck the include geometric non-linearity very good now we're going to go to loads and there is uh, if you expand this you see that the centrifugal force right there you expand on the load you expand this centrifugal force it says where is the support the support is the whole model because that's a body force axis of rotation i'm going to move this thing out of the way and select that z axis right there and uh, a thousand uh, radians per second a thousand rad rad underscore s which is going to be around 9000 yeah around 9000 uh, rpm now notice that uh, there it puts that icon there which means this is the, the speed has been specified as, as as a centrifugal force good now there is no other restraint so what i'm going to do under uh, under uh, loads same place that i applied the centrifugal force Centrifugal, centrifugal force, there is that inertial relief here. You click on it, and notice that when I do that, if you zoom in closely, let's see now, if you zoom in closely, you see what happens here. When I do inertial relief, it essentially uh, applies minimum restraint so that, uh, so that uh, no uh, artificial stresses are developed there. And it, in this case, it puts it right there at, the, at that location doesn't have to be like that but anyway that's what it does this is pretty much it so uh, let me go save here quick save okay now I'm going to uh, pretty much run this thing so you go to simulate uh, model and scenario check okay let's do this it's a good habit to do that There are any obvious fundamental mistake they they may pop up here and then we're going to do a simulation check now make sure that you have the bare minimum things needed to do the problem i could have jumped all the way to the end and done done simulation but if anything goes wrong then you have to go and backtrack and find out what happened you may get some warnings here which is fine oh, these warnings are not uh, you know it has to do with uh, for example some stuff that you uh, was removed because you didn't have the information for 
uh, you know, for uh, the kind of thing that I was looking for. There will be some messages here regarding uh, this uh, inertia relief, I believe. Let's see. Uh, oh, actually, fine. Yeah, that's okay. This is fine. And this is the one that I was talking about. Output request CF has been removed, etc. But anyway, uh, we didn't get an error message, so now we're going to run. Very simple problem, so it's going to be uh, quick, and then uh, we're going to check our numbers. Uh, check our numbers first to see whether they match, at least as far as the contour goes, with the stuff that we had. Uh, uh, we showed you on the on the slides, and then we're going to do a path plot, which allows us to see the variation of different things, such as, for example, stress, uh, hoop stress, etc. So here's the situation. This is this was the initial inc uh, initial increment, which of course there is no load on it. This is the final increment. Let me close this thing, and notice that uh, this is the one Mises stress. Let me close this. Uh, let me see now. These are the hoop and ra uh, radial radial stresses. Now at the exterior, at the very at the uh, exterior periphery here. The one Mises stress will be the same as the hoop stress because radial stress is zero. Uh, well, radial stress is zero. You can see that. So that number uh, should match uh, one, two, five, ten to the eight. This the unit is uh, Pascal. So uh, what is that? Knock off six zero. Well, let's see what the unit 1.25 10 to the 8. Let's check this out. Uh, the blue, uh, right? 1.25 10 to the 8. You can see that. Now, if you want to look at the displacement, so this matches perfectly the calculation that we had because on this exterior edge, the one Mises stress and the uh, hoop stress are actually the same. Now, if you look at the displacement, uh, we get 0.19 millimeter, which matches, uh, where is that thing? Uh, uh, yeah, there it is, uh, 0.19 millimeters, right there, radial dis displacement. Now, I also want to plot a curve like this, plot the, uh, the, 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 the curve, uh, this curve. So uh, we go here, let me close that. All right, so uh, the different ways you can do this. So here's here's how I'm going to do that. Uh, let me go to, uh, if, you, if you go to setup, first of all, you can create path and then ask for something to be plotted on that path. That's one way. Or you can go to back to uh, plots and say uh, uh, plot X, Y from path. You click on it. And here you can actually create a path instead of going to uh, to set up and create a path independently and then come back and select it here. You can actually create one here. Now it's going to be path number one. And we're going to do that based on node. So let me let me move this thing. Let me move this thing here. Let me move this thing there. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to do it based on nodes. That's one point, two point, three point. Oops. <laughs> I'm selecting all the nodes in the radial direction. So I'm not going to get exactly that curve because I'm deviating from a straight line. You can see that. I'll give you the idea. You can do the same thing with the hoop stress and the, uh, and the radial stress that can be plotted. Now, uh, the, the, the path has been created and we say, OK. OK, you go there. And you say, well, what is it that you want to do? This, for example, displacement, uh, magnitude, fine, along that path number one. And you say apply, and there we are. So this, I did a lousy job here because I was wo wobbling around. 
is supposed to be that, okay? Now, if you want to plot the stresses, hoop stress and radius stress, so let's go back there. And we say, okay, so here is, uh, now by the way, if you say deactivate existing plot and all of these things, so uh, I'm perfectly happy with this, so I'm going to uh, deactivate whatever I had. Next plot that I'm going to create, I'm going to deactivate that. Okay, so uh, uh, we're going to go to uh, stress, stress component. And for quantity, we use the maximum principle. Maximum principle is essentially your hoop stress. Okay, and you can do it uh, diff using different ways. Uh, let's say apply. There we are. Now, uh, if I say deactivate, the next plot that I do is going to get rid of this one. So I'm going to say don't, don't deactivate now. And then it's going to be uh, the it's going to be the intermediate principal stress, which is going to be a radial one. The smallest one, the the minimum principal stress is zero because that's the stress through the thickness, so uh, which is zero in shells. So intermediate, where is that? Uh, mid principal along the same path, etc. Apply. And there is going to be your uh, uh, hoop stress, which incidentally, uh, I'm sorry, this one is, uh, this one seems to be the, uh, the intermediate one because uh, it's zero at the very end. And this is the hoop stress, which is not zero. Okay, so I don't know how I mix these up, but <coughs> anyway, there we are. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that's pretty much it. Let me stop this. Now I'm going to be doing a similar problem, not the same thing, but I'm going to make it a little bit more complicated, maybe make it a flywheel so that there are holes, uh, four holes on the periphery. And then I'm going to take a sector of that and solve the problem. But I will not use inertial relief because remember, here I did not specify any restraints. Uh, I ask uh, I ask 3D experience to enforce that through the inertial relief, relief uh, process. Excellent. Good luck.